Hi everyone, welcome to the Virtual Design Day presentation for Team 19095. We are the Mitigating Moth Infestation Group at the Large Binocular Telescope Facility at Mount Graham. My name is Connor Maxwell and I'm joined today by Faisal al -Muradif. Anjali Tibernani. Charlie Bellomini. Alejandro Quintana. This project aims to understand how moths will behave in the face of various stimulants. Since the LBT facility has many employees, dealing with the infestation through use of dangerous chemicals is completely off the table. There are typically three categories when it comes to non-hazardous insect repellent methods, sound, scent, and light. We have created simple corridors in which the moths are forced to interact with various stimulants. In the scent category, we are testing a variety of oils at different concentrations, extracted from plants that moths would typically avoid. For sounds, we are running an ultrasonic frequency sweep from 30 kilohertz to 60 kilohertz with multiple modulations. We plan to compare the relative effectiveness using a tool called the repellency index. This will allow us to establish a series of curves to identify what repellent is the most effective relative to all other variants we test. Our objective was to gain a fundamental understanding of the moth behavior when interacting with potential repellents. At the end of the project, we had hoped to have a comprehensive study on the moth's behavior in the face of these obstacles. Our entire project has changed forms many times and has definitely kept us on our toes. When we first approached the problem, we were looking at what we could design that would be better than the traditional methods of solving pest infestation. We started planning to build a more effective device that we could place in the large binocular telescopes facility and it would effectively solve the infestation. We were able to visit the facility early in the year and realize our original approach wouldn't cut it. Due to the, to the architecture of the facility and the numerous tiny spaces the moths congregate in, we realized that one device simply would not be enough. We then decided to utilize a combination of different mitigation devices. We settled on building our own oil diffuser and sound emitter. Along with that, we had proposed using netting systems and different sealants when appropriate in the building. We landed on our final project being a comprehensive paper. We planned to lay out each test we had to run and give our educated recommendation on which combination of methods would be most effective to be scaled to the large binocular telescope facility. We knew this wasn't the most ideal approach, but due to our time and resources, it would be the most effective. Our project was not derived by strict system requirements. The only major concern from the telescope facility was we don't think of a solution that could create potential hazards. And to meet this request, we followed these three main requirements. First, system shall not release anything that is reported as an allergen by employees. Second, system shall not interfere with the restrictions imposed by the Endangered Species Act of 1973, Section 4 and 7 on the facility. The third and the last requirement is that the system shall not contain hazardous materials that exceed a zero on any SDS data reporting. In talking about the issues that we faced and need to be considered, we mainly think of the weather for conducting experiments. If the lab space is not temperature controlled, chances are the moths are not going to cooperate. The clip you're watching right now is just a quick one of the shed. You can see it was very quickly constructed, uh, needed to be just enough space to hang up the moths and have a small table for the testing area. Uh, this was shot on our night vision camera that we were using to record the test, so you can see how it was possible to see there in the dark. For our maze designs, we decided to go with two concepts, the slim design and the central release design. The advantages of the slim design are that we are able to test one variable at a time uh, and scent was going to be a big part of this. And then for the central release design, we are, we are able to test more than one variable at a time. And light testing was going to be a big part of this as we were going to have three wings of the central release design and we were able to v um, change the wavelength of the light um, in order to test three different wavelengths of light at the same time. As I mentioned before, the slim maze was going to be a good model to use in order to test scent, and our plan to test scent um, was to use one type of oil at a time and 
we would increase the potency of the scent each time we ran the test. And we would let the chamber accumulate with the scent and then lift the door to allow the moth to be exposed to the scent and uh, record their reaction. As for the sound, we plan on using a high frequency Twitter to test a wide range of frequencies and observe how the moths would react to them. The only requirement that we had for the sound was that it not affect the employees at the LBT telescope facility, and for that reason we decided to go with frequencies above 25 kHz. Besides higher frequencies, we also plan to test a variety of different sound waves such as a square wave and a sine wave, as well as trying to replicate bat noises since they are the natural predators. When it comes to light testing, we were planning on using the central release mesa sign in order to test multiple light sources at once. Through the use of an Arduino Uno, we would test multiple wavelengths of light and with the incorporation of the central release, be able to better tell which lights the moths are more attracted to and which ones could potentially repel them. We would also test whether moths are more attracted to incandescent light bulbs or LEDs. Unfortunately for our group, there was not much we could do to continue data collection after the virus issues surfaced. Um, while we gathered control results and some preliminary scent repellent testing, we began to have issues with the weather that prevented moths from hatching. We had a contingency plan in place, which was to order more moths as the weather would begin to warm up. All was in place, even after the virus had begun shutting everything down. Um, but as of a few weeks ago, the moth supplier shut its doors, and with little to no data from the first batch due to premature deaths, this new d news had removed our hopes of being able to continue with data collection. The original plan for a deliverable to our sponsor was a paper that was a comprehensive review of all of the behavioral studies on the moth taken over the course of the semester. Unfortunately, with most of our data collection being cut off, um, we're kind of having to change that, which is essentially just creating that same paper that we had talked about. It's just that in lieu of our actual data, we'll be uh, attempting to gather as much information as we possibly can for the facility. A very important lesson learned for us was the time required it takes to get a lab space, especially when you're dealing with insects. Um, we gave ourselves about five to six months of time, which was not nearly enough, Where when you really need to start looking for a lab space at the very beginning of the school year. The reason why this was such a big lesson learned was because it added more variables that we then had to deal with which affected our testing, such as the weather with the temperature as well as precipitation. At the start of the project, a major surprise was dropped on us, and that was the fact the moths were only around during the months of May through September. This was a worrisome concern since the project revolved around them. Luckily, this problem was overcome through the help of the good people at Benson Research, who were able to provide us with moths for testing. Another quick and final lesson learned is that moths are mostly dormant throughout the day. Having a maze design that relies heavily on their motion was inherently flawed from the start. In hindsight, we would go back and change our maze design to incorporate the fact that they do not move a lot during the day. To end us off here, we have some quick credits. And we'd like to thank you all for your time and thank you for providing us such a wonderful opportunity this year.